This presentation will give information about the amazing Tiger Loop oil deaerator, the world's most popular oil deaerator. The Tiger Loop is manufactured in Sweden by SPX Flow Technology Sweden AB, which is part of the global corporation SPX Flow, headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Tiger Loop is distributed in the United States by Beckett Corporation. Visit spxflow.com for distributors outside of the United States. SPX and Beckett are not affiliated companies. This video is copyright protected. We will talk about the following topics. What is a Tiger Loop? What are its advantages? And how do you install it? What are some frequently asked questions? Why priming and bleeding are not enough? How do you deal with air issues? And what are the additional benefits of using a Tiger Loop? First, what is it? The Tiger Loop is an oil deaerator. It's a device that separates air, gas, and vapor bubbles from heating oil. What does the Tiger Loop look like? Between 1987 and 2004, the Tiger Loop model T60i looked like this. In 2005, the Tiger Loop was completely redesigned, and the new model Tiger Loop TN was introduced. The new Tiger Loop was given an upper chamber, which acts as a fail-safe safety chamber. In 2007, the Tiger Loop Ultra was introduced. The Tiger Loop Ultra combines a Tiger Loop with a 10 micron spin-on filter, allowing you to install a Tiger Loop and a filter in one installation, rather than two separate installations. It is important to remember that the Tiger Loop TN and the Tiger Loop Ultra are listed by Underwriters Laboratories in the United States. In 2008, the Tiger Loop Twin was introduced for larger commercial burners, firing up to 52 gallons per hour. In 2009, two biofuel models were introduced, the Tiger Loop Bio and the Tiger Loop Ultra B. The biofuel models can be used for number one and number two fuel oils and biofuels all the way up to B100. Why use a Tiger Loop? Let's go over some of the advantages. It safely handles suction line air accumulation. It removes air from the oil introduced by transporting and delivery. It reduces vacuum for clear foam-free oil at the nozzle. It eliminates the return line and its potential leak hazard. It extends filter element life. It preheats oil for cleaner combustion and increased efficiency. And it is listed by Underwriters Laboratories in the United States and Canada. It's much more than just a problem solver. How is the Tiger Loop installed? The Tiger Loop needs only one inlet line from the tank. This saves you the cost of installing a second line to return oil to the tank. It eliminates the risk of having a pressurized return line. The Tiger Loop uses two lines between the Tiger Loop and the pump. So you get two pipe performance with the safety and benefits of a single pipe installation. Let's go over converting from a single pipe installation. Disconnect a line between the filter and the pump. Install the fusible fire safety valve directly into the bottom inlet port of the Tiger Loop. Connect the existing inlet line to the fusible valve. Connect the right side port of the Tiger Loop to the inlet port of the pump. Remember that you must install the bypass plug into the pump to convert it to a two pipe operation. Then connect the left side port of the Tiger Loop to the return port of the pump. Let's go over converting from a two pipe installation. First, install the fusible fire safety valve directly into the bottom of the Tiger Loop. Then connect the existing inlet line to the fusible valve. Connect the right side port of the Tiger Loop to the pump inlet port. Cap and seal off the existing return line to the tank. Connect the left side port of the Tiger Loop to the pump return port. Here are some important installation guidelines. The Tiger Loop must be securely mounted vertically. The fusible fire safety valve must be installed directly into the center port of the Tiger Loop. 
there must be nothing installed in the oil lines between the tiger loop and the pump such as check valves filters or other devices if a fusible valve is required at the pump make sure it's completely open or you may damage the pump or tiger loop the bypass plug must be installed in the pump the filter must be between the tank and the center port of the tiger loop Install an OSV valve or an anti-siphon valve if your oil tank is higher than the burner. And remember, there can only be one burner for each Tiger Loop. The Tiger Loop was designed, tested, and listed with Underwriters Laboratories for use with one burner per Tiger Loop. Let's go over some advanced Tiger Loop frequently asked questions. How does it work? The pump pulls oil through a check valve inside the Tiger Loop. The oil goes into the inlet port of the pump and then out of the return port, back toward the Tiger Loop. Oil fills the top of the Tiger Loop and pushes air out of the top vent. When enough oil lifts the float, the vent closes and seals shut. A valve opens in the bottom of the Tiger Loop that allows oil back into the inlet line. We now have oil looping in a circuit between the Tiger Loop and the pump. The oil in the loop is cycling at the full capacity of the pump, typically around 20 gallons per hour. The nozzle removes what is needed for combustion, say for example, one gallon per hour. This oil is replaced by oil from the tank at the same flow rate as the nozzle, one gallon per hour. If air or gas enters this loop, the float drops the air is vented and the float rises and seals the vent automatically. Another frequently asked question is, the Tiger Loop is full, what's wrong? The new model Tiger Loop has two chambers, a lower chamber and an upper safety chamber. The lower chamber can be nearly empty or completely full, or anywhere in between. This is normal and depends on your installation. Systems that have to lift oil or have lots of air will always appear to be empty. Systems that have very little air or have tanks higher than the burner may have the lower chamber fill up completely. This is normal and should not cause you any concern. The upper chamber of the Tiger Loop is a safety chamber. It acts as a fail safe for the lower chamber. You should never see oil in the uppermost chamber. A Tiger Loop with oil in the upper chamber should be removed immediately, and a new Tiger Loop should be installed on this system until the cause of the problem has been identified and corrected. Overpressurizing the Tiger Loop or the use of additives could cause this problem. So to review, the level of oil in the bottom chamber of the Tiger Loop can vary from completely empty to completely full or anywhere in between, but you should never see oil in the uppermost safety chamber of the Tiger Loop. Question, if I add a water heater, do I need another Tiger Loop? Answer, you need one Tiger Loop for every burner. The Tiger Loop was designed for use with one burner and is UL listed for use with one burner. Connecting two burners to one Tiger Loop is not permitted and is contrary to the manufacturer's instructions and underwriter's laboratory's guidelines. You must never install more than one burner for each Tiger Loop. Question, how far will a Tiger Loop pull? The Tiger Loop has a maximum lift of 13 feet. Refer to the lift chart for line lengths based on lift height and gallons per hour. Question, the burner keeps locking out. What's wrong? The reason is air and gases accumulating in the piping. Let's explore why priming and bleeding a system is often not enough to prevent burner lockouts. Let's assume you can prime and bleed a system until all of the air in the piping is gone. When oil in the tank is higher than the burner, a gravity-fed siphon effect can be established. Oil will flow on its own until the oil in the tank is lower than the burner. Unfortunately, in reality, this system will collect air because of Henry's law of gases. Atmospheric gases are constantly pushed into the oil in the tank because of atmospheric pressure.
A common example of Henry's law is carbonated soda. Gases are pushed into the soda under pressure. These gases bubble out of the soda when you open the bottle. Because the pressure is reduced, the same thing happens to fuel oil inside the piping. Gases in the fuel oil are released when you draw a vacuum on the oil. These gases collect in the piping and interfere with the gravity-fed siphon. Eventually, the gas will pass into the burner, potentially causing a lockout. Going from 3 eighths to 1 half inch piping can make the problem even worse. Larger piping cannot be completely purged of air, and larger piping holds much more air. Also, the oil flow is much slower, so air cannot be swept out of the piping. Using smaller than 3 eighths piping could eliminate this problem. Unfortunately, in the United States, many building codes do not allow smaller than 3 eighths piping. Oil burners do not get along with bubbles. They cause lockouts. But even if the burner doesn't lock out, it can experience rough firing, delayed ignition, nozzle drip, and soot. Burner efficiency will suffer. Soot accumulation will continue and efficiency will keep dropping. Let's look inside the burner to see how air bubbles lead to nozzle dripping. When a burner is firing, oil in the nozzle line is under pressure. Say for example, 100 PSI. If air gets into the nozzle line, it is compressed under 100 pounds of pressure. As the burner shuts down and pump pressure decreases, the air bubble expands, pushing oil out of the nozzle. Oil drips, causing smoke and soot. Soot covers and insulates the inside of the furnace and robs efficiency. The heat goes up the chimney instead of warming the house. Air collects in the piping over time, even in a completely airtight system. Air comes out of the oil when you pull a vacuum. It causes rough firing, delayed ignition, soot, and lockouts. How do you solve this problem? The Tiger Loop is an extremely effective solution to this problem. It can help prevent lockouts by removing air in the lines. The Tiger Loop does far more than just deaeration. It will preheat oil, increase filter life, reduce vacuum, and stop storing dirt in the tank. Let's see why preheating the oil is important and how cold oil produces soot. If you look at the inside of an oil burner nozzle, you'll see that it has very small metering slots. These slots are cut at an angle. When the burner fires, oil is forced through the slots under pressure. Oil starts spinning with a fast rotation inside the nozzle. The fast rotation creates a thin wall of oil. This creates very small droplets of oil and good atomization, and that means no soot. Cold oil is more viscous, resulting in slower rotation and a thicker wall of oil. This creates big drops of oil, bad atomization, and that means inefficient combustion and soot. You burn more oil and get less heat. In addition, soot insulates the inside of the furnace and robs efficiency. Let's see how the Tiger Loop preheats oil. In a two pipe system, cold oil enters the home very rapidly. Then the oil is rushed back outside. It never has a chance to warm up. With the Tiger Loop installed, oil enters the home very slowly and has an opportunity to warm up. Once it enters the home, it never leaves. When the oil reaches the burner, it will cycle between the burner and the Tiger Loop about 20 times before it's fired. The oil absorbs heat from the burner and the pump. This graphic shows how the Tiger Loop preheats oil, but also it illustrates several more advantages of the Tiger Loop. Notice how two pipe systems stir up dirt in the tank. This dirt could enter the piping and cause problems. In addition, notice how two pipe systems have to filter 20 times more oil. This could create very high vacuum when the filter gets dirty or when the filter is plugged with wax from the cold. With the Tiger Loop installed, you only need to filter the oil once, not 20 times. The flow rate through the filter is drastically reduced and you get lower vacuum and better combustion. 
let's get technical and talk about piping for overhead lines. While a Tiger Loop is extremely effective in removing air from a system, some systems still have problems. Even with a Tiger Loop installed, the problem is too much air. The reason is the piping. Let's see how to pipe a system to handle the bubbles one bubble at a time. In overhead systems with large piping, you can never remove all of the air. You can bleed a system and get a burner firing. But because of Henry's law of gases, vacuum creates bubbles, which collect in the piping. The oil level at the burner drops. Creating a trap in the piping below the Tiger Loop can help. The trap will release one bubble at a time. This can sometimes help on problem systems. The ultimate solution, however, would be to use much smaller piping that accumulates less air. This diagram shows how to create the oil trap we just discussed. Here are a few things to remember. Air in the system is unavoidable. Bleeding does not remove all of the air. Air can coexist in the system if handled properly. All systems are unique and react differently to air. Here are a few more things to know. The Tiger Loop comes with a five-year warranty. SPX recommends replacing the Tiger Loop in 10 years. They believe in preventative maintenance to maintain the Tiger Loop's excellent reputation and keep customer satisfaction at its maximum. The Tiger Loop must only be installed by your licensed oil burner technician. Beckett Corp is happy to provide technical support to licensed oil burner technicians in the United States. If you are a homeowner with questions, please call your oil burner technician. If you are outside the USA, go to sbxflowtechnology.com slash en slash tiger home and locate the distributor for your area. Here are some final comments for oil burner professionals. The Tiger Loop can increase customer satisfaction and customer retention. The Tiger Loop can prevent lockouts, keep your customers happy, and maintain your excellent professional reputation. The Tiger Loop should not be used as a last resort. It should be used to keep a system at maximum efficiency. Install a Tiger Loop before there is damage to the system's efficiency and your reputation.